come down from the Blueberry Hills to hit what should have been a 14 mile um, section on um, sea ice or on a spit. And because it was so cold in that dip when I first came out and there was snow had blown over on the trail, it, it was it was a case of the sled was one minute on ice and the next minute dragging on these. And, and you could tell every time the sled hit the, the blown over snow part, it, it just, it slowed enough that it would just give that little snag on the dogs and with them being that tired and myself that tired, the, the encouragement, you know, I was trying to kick as much as I could and go, but then that, that just turned into, I could only kick until the next snow pile. And then it just turned into literally holding on to those front leads and walking. And that, that had us going, you know, I, they were all still there and then I would actually let go of the lead and they'd walk past me, but only to the second dogs and then they would wait for me. So if they'd have carried on walking on their own, which would have almost been like trotting on their own and that would have been okay, but they didn't. And so every, every now and again, I'd stop, encourage, switch around a little bit so that all the weight wasn't on the back too, pulling the sled and the, the, the front too, because b- between all the males, they, they were doing something. So just switching things through, switching things through, but it just got to a point that, um, okay, I'd walked seven miles in such a long time that I knew the people in front of me would be leaving that next checkpoint. And then a native guy that they'd sent to um, look out for me, told me the same, that they were getting up and getting ready to go. So now this would be three or four hours later. So I knew that by the time I got to that checkpoint, I would have to recoup that time and more, and then still be able to go on to, which is renowned as a a pretty windy, um, open, very difficult to navigate in the wind portion of the race. And so just, again, looking at the dogs and gauging how they were and their fun factor was going down. I, I was still totally with it. I would have been totally fine to have gone on and know when I was at the back. But again, stranger things have happened and you can come back and other people can have issues. But it, it just got to a point that I didn't think it was fair to, to push on for them something that the fun was, was going out of it. And even though, you know, even in other races, you, you, you have it where they get tired and you get to a checkpoint and you can rejuvenate, you can do things. But in a race like this, you, know, you come almost 800 miles and yet you've got four more difficult legs with one with a the leg called Mini McKinley for a reason. And I know that's tough and, and a lot of climbing and stuff. And if the dogs are getting that tired, it's, it's not the climbing up that's gonna hurt them. It's the, the free fall running down um, that would hurt them on the other side. And so I, I, that was contemplating and going over my mind. I just didn't think it was fair to, um, to push on at a point where there was still so far to go. And um, it's, not an, it's, it's not an all or bust kind of thing. It's a, you, you're doing this for fun for you, fun for them. And um, I just thought in their interest, it wasn't, it wasn't in my interest to, to push on.